so um, before we get deep into this conversation, before we get deep into this uh, presentation, I want us to look at the picture. That's a picture that was taken about four years ago. It was taken during a cleanup campaign during the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair in 2018. At this point, my startup was only six months old, right? And we were hungry for change. We were hungry to be seen by companies, by corporates, and we were just excited about the initiative that we were doing. So we decided, you know what? For us to gain visibility, let's take our t-shirts and let's go out to the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair and, and do something radical. So it was a two-man campaign, yes. When you are starting new businesses, you do not have the luxury of working with so many companies. You do not have the luxury of working with big budgets, with big teams. You only have your great ideas, your energy, and your ability to be innovative and think right on the spot. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I want you to take note of is that the person in this picture is an industrial chemist. She is. I studied applied chemistry. You know what, each time I attend a, a, a talk, at a conference, or a workshop, people are excited and afterwards they come to me and say, Koda, that was an amazing talk. You know what, we really like it. And you know, there are people that really like to ask. They ask, oh, so where did you study? Oh, and then what happened? And you know what, eventually we get to the question, oh, what exactly did you study? And you know, I'm always anticipating their reaction when I say, no, I didn't study environmental sciences. I actually studied applied chemistry. And you know why this is important? This is important because we need to realize that in the paradigm that we are living in, we need to start reimagining our careers. We need to start reimagining how we can go about um, with our day-to-day -day businesses. And for me, all the information that is going to be shared today is coming from the experiences that I've built from running this waste management and recycling enterprise. We need to rethink industrialization and capitalism. We need to rethink the way our economies run. And I'm happy that today I'm going to be sharing with you all the experiences that I've built up. And some of them, they are my ideas. Some of them, they are shared from the text and the knowledge that I've built over time. I want us to take a moment and imagine that humanity, the whole of humanity was on a train and we we're moving along in the forest. So since 18, 1820, humanity has been on this amazing journey. We had the first industrial revolution happening between 1820 and 1840. This was an amazing change in how we, our society were constructed because it meant that we could do more work and achieve more using machines. So we have been on this amazing journey, on this ride, enjoying research and technological development, economic advancement. So many people have lived to tell their stories. So many people have benefited com from capitalism. They've built businesses that have sold m millions of products and made millions of money. We have so many self-made millionaires and billionaires in the world today, right? It's amazing, it's exciting. But you know what? With each industrial revolution, the train starts to move faster. With each, with the dawn of each age, the train starts to change speed, it moves faster. This is why we have this blood, pro, uh, blood train in the picture. But what we do not know is that right up ahead, there is a blind, there is a deep somewhere, there is a big hole, and in this big hole, what do we have? Ecocide. We have climate change. We have environmental pollution. So in as much as we have benefited and enjoyed the benefits of industrialization and technological advancement, we can't run away from, from the, the negatives that have, come, that have come and a reason from that. We can't hide and run away from plastic pollution and what's done to our oceans. We can't hide and run away from how we are having plastic chemicals in the food that we eat, in the water that we drink. And you know what? We do not have the same luxury of taking another 200 years before we change because scientists are telling us between 2026 and 2040, we may reach a temperature increase in climate that will make, that will permanently change our climatic system. So if we do not act now, if we do not act in the next five years, 
you know what? We are going to change nature as we know it. We are going to start experiencing hazardous. We are still going to start experiencing climatic um, disasters like we've never imagined. And we need to think fast and we need to act fast. So how do we start? How do we navigate this very tense situation? How do we navigate this situation where we need to act? How do we change systems that have been refined for over 200 years? 200 years we have worked on industrialization. And for 200 years, we have brought pollution. And now, in a very short space of time, we are required to change our means of production. We are to, required to change how we are creating energy. We are being asked we need to change how we handle our waste. In less than five years, we need to redesign a system that has been created and perfected over time. And you know what? The answer is innovations but green innovations to be specific. Green innovations allow us to work and to start implementing new ideas that save the environment and have products that are good for the environment. Green innovations allow us to preserve the, the, the natural resources that we use. Green innovations allow us to stop this habit that we have gotten into of utilizing more than the earth can give to us. Currently, scientists do tell us we are extracting over 55 billion tons of, of materials from the earth. This could be um, minerals, this could be metals, this could be fuels that we use for energy. And at this rate, the earth cannot sustain because we need one and a half earths to just sustain this level of consumption. So we need green innovations to move away from these patterns that we are finding ourselves in. And over the last five years in my journey as a green entrepreneur, I have come up with what I love to think about as pillars. These are pillars of innovations. These are pillars of um, how we can rethink the economies that we live in and be more sustainable. And that first pillar is object innovation. Object innovation allow object innovation, object innovation, the previous one, yes. So object innovation allow us to introduce new products into our economies. We can eliminate the plastic that is polluting our cities and put something that is more biodegradable. Object innovation allows us to introduce new services where instead of throwing away old uh, materials, we can reuse them. And that means that we do not to need to keep extracting raw materials from our earth. Object innovation allows us to have services and processes and industrial processes that are more sustainable. So instead of you manufacturing your blanket or your chair or your bed using um, coal, uh, energy generated from coal, you can now use um, energy generated from a renewable resource such as, um, such as wind, such as solar or water or hydro. When we're looking at object innovation, we are looking at innovation at corporate level, at company level. And this gets me exciting because that's where I'm involved in with vital recycling. Right? For example, vital recycling offers waste management services. We're working with corporates, we're working with businesses, we're working with communities to introduce an, an environmental service where we allow businesses to design out waste from their systems. So what they can do, they can map out their processes and make sure that nothing goes to the landfill. We'll engage with them in consultancy, we'll do we we'll engage with them in consultancy. We will then help them link them up with the recyclers. We will make sure that they have robust systems that do not generate unnecessary waste, which we do not want in the environment. The second level of innovation that I love is business innovations. Why? Because each year, thousands and hundreds of patents are made. Hundreds and hundreds of patents are patented. Why? With green products. That could be very useful, but you know what? Those products never get to see the day of light because they are not distributed. Maybe sometimes it may, it's because the consumers are not aware of the benefits of using better products such as um, biodegradable plastic, or sometimes it's because they, they can't afford it. 
But object inno business innovation is very important because now it allows us to commercialize green products and green innovations. Under business innovations, well, Pisano um, has proposed or postulated four quadrants. These four quadrants of business innovation allows businesses to select when they are greening their processes where they want to work. In the first quadrant, we can get known products and use uh, existing business models to make sure that you're distributing a green product. In the second quadrant, you have um, in the second quadrant, you have disruptive green innovations. This is where now you actually require a new business model to to distribute uh, to distribute an existing product. And then in the third quadrant is where we have architectural green innovations. Architectural green innovation get me excited. You know why? Because they involve new technologies that have never been seen, and they involve creating new businesses that haven't been tested. And then in the last quadrant, we actually have radical green innovations. The radical green innovations need new technology, but they can be commercialized using known business models. The third pillar that I see as being important is the innovative leadership. Do you know what? All these ideas that I'm sharing with you today would be irrelevant, would be useless without people that have the leadership skills to actually commercialize, right? What use is a product if you don't use it? It's just as good as an idea, right? So we need to see these products and services on the market and we need innovative leadership. We want people that can rethink how we are living in our societies. These are innovative leaders, they can be entrepreneurs, they can be managers, they can be uh, people in pub public offices, they can even be politicians. It does not matter. But what we need are leaders who are able to see that, remember I said it's an emergency, we do not have time. So we need people that are able to conceptualize in a short time and act upon these new ideas so that our earth is saved. We want leaders that are able to tell a compelling story and get people into action because it's an emergency. We want people, leaders that are able to combine unique skills to see um, talent, to see innovation and creativity and appreciate it and lead our, our planet to a better space. And then, under innovative leadership, I want to give you an example of Target 13. Target 13 is an environmental pollution awareness campaign that we started. It's a, it has a very interesting story. So in 2019, this was almost one and a half years after we'd started Vital Recycling, we realized that as a startup, we didn't have enough resources. As a startup, we needed a lot of skill. And you know, when you're running a, a small business, sometimes skill can be one of the hardest things to get because you need good money, you need proper financing to get the best skill. So we decided that that was not going to stop us with the team. We decided that was not going to stop anybody. We were still going to go ahead and talk about environmental pollution. We we're still going to talk, go ahead and run environmental projects and recycling programs. But we had to create something. We had to create something that everybody could recognize. We had to create something, a platform that could put together government, businesses and civil society and we thought you know what let's go back to the SDGs we've got SDG 13 so everybody has a common goal let's have a campaign around that that's innovative leadership where you realize that you may not have the resource you may not have all the resources but because you understand the times because you understand the what's required in the demand and the agents and the need for a solution, you're able to think outside the box to create new partnerships, to create new products, and to redesign and channel everybody in a very specific direction. And for us, this very specific direction was to raise awareness on environmental pollution and recycling in communities. The last column that I love is policy innovative policies, the role of political will in environment change is not, cannot be understated. We need policies that speak to the future because policy can hinder great leaders, policy can hinder great products. We need to be able to realize that for our research and industry to work conducively and create a, 
a, a, a space where they can create new products that are actually safe for our environment, we actually need policies that enhance the capacity of those who are innovating. We need policies that help us to, to change uh, societal behavior, that clip in on the negative behaviors that we have developed over time. One of the very key um, areas that is impacted by policy are green value chains. Green value chains are basically just new business ideas that are coming up from innovators and entrepreneurs. But entrepreneurship is not for the faint hearted. It has a lot of headaches and heartaches. There is a lot of risk involved. So we need to be able to make sure that the environment that we create for those who are taking the risk to create products, services, and businesses that are going to be sustainable for the future, those people, they need to be taken care of. We need to create an environment with policies that help them start their businesses, that help them run their businesses, and that help them stay well-financed as they work through these amazing ideas and innovation. So. For me, for today, this is what I had for you. Thank you.